Now 31, let's take a look at example two. And as promised, I want us to start to interpret slopes as rates of change, which means we're gonna to start to practice to put putting these slopes or explaining what these slopes are in a sentence. Okay, so let's get some context. It says the population of a small town increased from 1,442 to 1,868 between the years 2009 and 2012. Find the change of the population per year if we assume the change was constant from 20, oh, excuse me, 2009 to 2012. Okay, so a couple things I wanna point out. They're telling us right here, change was constant. Anytime you hear a change was constant, it's implied that we're dealing with a linear function. And that's going to become important later on when we add all sorts of other functions into the mix. All right, but let me put a little arrow there. But anytime you see the phrase constant rate of change, that means, okay, we're definitely dealing with a line, definitely dealing with a linear function. Now, when it says find the change of population per year, that phrase per right there, that's trying to hint at you, hey, I'm interested in a slope. I want the change in y in ratio to the change in x. All right, change in y over change in x or change in population per year. Okay, so anytime you hear per, that's like a little buzzword that we're talking about the slope. So I would like to find the slope of this linear function. And they gave me two ordered pairs. We just kind of, we need to unpack them and hear them. So what are my two variables here? If you read through this problem, there are two things that are changing. I think the first thing we can um, spot is that the population is changing, right? This was not constant. It increased from 1,442 to 1868. So this population of this small town, that's one of my variables. All right, but the other thing that was changing in this problem is time, all right, is year. All right, it was changing from 2009 to 2012. So my two variables here are years and population. Now we have to decide which of these variables is our input and which is our output. Which one's independent, which one's dependent. And, and in most cases, not all cases, I don't wanna say it works for every problem, but usually year is your X variable. And I'm gonna put it in quotes because I don't want you to think it'll always be the letter X. I could have just as easily said this was the letter T for time. And that would make my population the Y variable. And the population of a town does depend on the year. All right, years don't depend on population. Time keeps ticking whether you want it to or not. So it's very common that this is the independent variable and population in this case would be the dependent variable. So the population of a town does depend on the year, not the other way around. Again, years don't depend on almost anything. They just keep on ticking. Okay, so with that, there are two ordered pairs in here and we have to be on the listen for them. So I see in 2009, I had 1,442 folks in my town. So I had an X value of 2009 and a Y value of 1,442. So I'm just gonna write that out here. We've got 2009 to 1,442. I also hear my other ordered pair of 2012 and 1,868. All right, and I'm being asked to find the slope. I want the change in population per year if there's this constant rate of change. Well, let's go find the slope. We know the slope is always the change in y over the change in x. So let's see what we have here. We have, what, 1868 minus 1442 in ratio to 2012 minus 2009. So that, if I'm, I'm gonna go one fraction or one aspect of this fraction at a time. My numerator is 426. Meaning, in these three years, my town grew by 426 people. All right, my denominator is three because it was three years. Now, before, before I simplify this, I want us to, again, think about the units here. These are the numbers, but what are the units? Let's make another fraction. What are the units on this numerator? Well, this isn't 426, I don't know, 426 iPhones. This isn't 426 pencils. This is 426 people. Right? And this was three years. 
So sometimes it's good and helpful to just use a unit analysis. And when I say unit analysis, I mean literally looking at the units. So in these three years, this town increased its population by 426 people. Now, we're not gonna leave this as is. We're gonna turn it, we're gonna simplify it. So let's see what 426 divided by three is. And it happens to be a whole number. Okay, great, it's 142. If it was a decimal, that would have been fine as well. So this is actually going to be, I'll write it over here. This is going to be 142 over one, basically. And you can write it just as 142, but I want you to, again, hear this, people in ratio to years. So anytime you have a number, right, even if I had just written this, excuse, let, me, let me erase this, maybe I just said initially this was the number 142. Well, any number can be written as a unit ratio. And when we say unit ratio, we mean that number in ratio to itself. Hold on, I'm gonna sneeze. Excuse me, okay. And the, the benefit of the unit ratio is you really can start to see what the slope means. This is telling you for every year, the population of that town increases by about 142 people. It might not be exactly 142 every year, but on average, it's by 142. So you can see the change in population per year. Each year, right, every one year, we gained 142 people. So, so let's say we wanted to write this as a sentence. I would say for each year that passes, the population of the small town. Now it's increasing because the slope is positive. So I would say increases by an average of 142 people. All right, so there's my sentence, right? So you see me talking about the units on the x variable. So for every year that goes by, the population of the small town, there's my y variable, increases. Now I'm increasing because my slope is positive, and I increase by about 142 people, or you could say 142 people per year. Now why do I have average? That's because slopes are average rates of change. All right, so let me make sure we're, we're writing that down somewhere. So slope is an average rate of change. So again, it doesn't mean that every year exactly 142 people showed up. Maybe one year it was 150 and the other year it was 136 and then it was 141. But it averaged, it averaged out, excuse me, to 142 people per year. All right, so there's our first look at writing a slope or interpreting your slope as a rate of change, putting it into a sentence, all right? So with that, we're gonna practice that again in example three. We'll practice it a bunch more times until we can get used to it. All right, guys, I'll see you in a few. Bye.